안녕하십니까? Nicolas and there are many news coming out from the NFT space lately. And some, if not most of these news are not good news. Like for example, the news of OpenSea, a NFT marketplace being hacked and users losing more than $3 million. So on this video, I wanted to explain how the hack happened, who is responsible for it, where did the hacker put the money, but most importantly, I wanna make this video to sort of warn you about NFTs. The reason why is because I can see that there are a lot of new people that are joining the NFT space and that worries me. But even though I believe that blockchains, cryptos and NFTs have a huge potential, I also face palm myself every time that I see that somebody's paying crazy money for a JPEG. And I double face palm myself every time I see somebody thinking that they are an artist because they can drag and drop a JPEG into a website and sell it there. Last weekend, users from the NFT marketplace OpenSea started to report that their NFTs were missing from their wallets. OpenSea is an NFT marketplace, which means it's a website that allows people to buy and sell JPEGs of monkeys. It is not the only one, but it is the biggest one. When you sell an NFT in OpenSea, you never really give OpenSea the NFT. It's not like in the real art world where the artist paints the picture and it gives that picture to the gallery. The gallery keeps the picture, and when the gallery makes the sale, the gallery will give that picture to the buyer. OpenSea just provides a nice user interface. They show that you are selling your NFTs, but they don't have your NFTs. The sale process also doesn't happen in the OpenSea website. When somebody wants to buy your NFT, OpenSea will invoke some code that is stored in the Ethereum blockchain. And that is the code that is going to trigger and initiate the transaction between you and me. I will send you some money and you will send me your NFT. OpenSea does none of that. The code is running on the Ethereum blockchain. OpenSea is just calling that code with both of our accounts as buyer and seller. Keep in mind that OpenSea is invoking the code. But because you are the owner of the NFT, when this code is invoked, you are going to have to confirm this action that is going to happen. So if you're going to spend a million dollars in the photo of a monkey, when OpenSea invokes the code to make that transfer happen, you have to confirm that transaction. You have to write your spending password to confirm the transaction to say that that's exactly what you want to do. OpenSea can invoke their code as much as they want, but if I or you don't sign those invocations, if we don't sign those transactions, the code is not going to go through. As we said, the code that OpenSea is invoking lives in something called a smart contract, which is the one in the Ethereum blockchain. This smart contract is the one that has all the instructions of what happens after the invocation is confirmed with our signature. This smart contract is public, is open source, and is readable. You can click and read to see what the smart contract will do. But of course, nobody reads it. Now, if you have a hacker mind, which I'm sure you do, by now you can probably see where this is going. You can probably realize why this is a problem. OpenSea doesn't hold anyone's NFT. The users hold their NFTs, and the users are very comfortable signing transactions that are coming from the OpenSea website without checking what is the contract that they are signing the transaction to. They trust that OpenSea is invoking the right code. They trust that OpenSea is invoking the right functions and is not invoking a function that is going to give everybody's NFTs to me. Because that's it, they trust OpenSea. So that's it, that's what the hackers did. They didn't have to hack the OpenSea smart contract, they didn't have to hack the Ethereum virtual machine, all they had to do was hack the user's trust. Since they know that the users are the ones that have the NFTs and they know that the users really trust websites that look like OpenSea and they don't read the contracts that they are signing, all the hackers had to do was send an email that looked like it was coming directly from OpenSea to a link to a website that looked like OpenSea. And it was on that website where the users were told that they had to do a migration of their NFTs. The website invoked some code that looked like it was gonna do the migration. The users signed that transaction, but in reality, the code that they signed didn't do any of those things. Instead, the hackers saved the signatures of the users. And with those valid signatures, the hackers invoked their own code to make a transaction from the wallet of the users to the wallet of the attackers. And because the attackers had the signatures, those transactions went through without a problem. 
After the attackers had the NFTs, they resold them again. The money was sent to something called Tornado Cash, which is what many hackers use to hide the money. Tornado Cash basically mixes the transactions so they are almost untraceable. Let me know if you want a video on that. Now, so far, looking at the attacker's wallet, we can see that they sent 1,115 ETH to Tornado Cash, and since then, they haven't moved anymore. So, as you can see, there was no advanced hacking going on. It was just a phishing attack where users that trust OpenSea too much and they sign whatever OpenSea tells them to were affected. They signed the wrong transaction and they approved it without actually knowing what was going on. Now, keep in mind that this is the official story. This is what OpenSea and other people are saying. So OpenSea is saying that it wasn't their fault. It was the user's fault for trusting and clicking in the wrong link. But the users are saying that they didn't click anywhere and that this is OpenSea's fault. So as you can see, this is very recent. It's a developing story almost, so we have to wait and see what happened. But the moral of the story is that as you can see, this industry is very, 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 very young. Where maybe the developers of OpenSea or the programming languages used to program these blockchains and these smart contracts are not really ready to actually handle billions of dollars of value or where maybe the people that are using these platforms don't have the technical background to be able to use them well and safely, and where a tiny mistake, a single click, can cost millions of dollars in losses with no one to protect them. What I think is that having no protection for anybody in this wild west is a double-edged sword. Because cryptocurrency projects and blockchains, they are all trying to eliminate the government from our economical systems. They are trying to create currencies away from the central banks and all the normal systems of power that we know. So that means that if you don't want them, you also shouldn't go for them when you need help. And that's something that we all have to think about. Are people ready to be their own banks? Are you ready to keep your savings safe? This is why the fundamentals are so important. And if you learn such fundamentals, if you understand the concepts, you will also be able to identify the scammers. The scammers, the hackers, the ones that actually know what you're talking about, the ones that understand the fundamentals and the ones that hope that people like you and me don't know what we're talking about so they can confuse us and they can trick us and they can steal our money. Which is exactly what happened with OpenSea. I made a whole series on the fundamentals of what makes up NFTs, blockchains, smart contracts, and all those things. So please check it out. It's all YouTube and it's all for free to watch. And also remember that if you want to become a programmer and you want to do it for free with me, then please click the link below. There you will find many free courses that you can take on things like JavaScript, Python, React, React Native, Next.js, Next.js, Go, among many other things. More than 100,000 people have taken our free JavaScript, React, React Native, and Python courses, so click the link below. But that's just what I think. Let me know what you think. What is your opinion of this blockchain, crypto, NFTs, all those things? Let me know, please, on the comments. I'm going to be reading them right now. I think there is innovation. I think there is potential, but I might be wrong. I don't claim to be an expert on these things. I'm just somebody that feels really passionate about this, but I care about your opinion. Do you think it's a scam? Do you think it's not going to work? Do you think it's going to get better? Do you think these mistakes are going to teach us something and we're going to build better systems or better user experience? I hope so. I don't know. Thank you for watching as always. Stay free, stay healthy, stay happy. Eat kimchi. Kamsamnida. Samangheyo. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.